wake up in your bedroom, you have a sour taste in your mouth. The bed's a mess. You pick up the phone and call the center. It tells you the date and the time. It's been three days. Your last memory was at the office when you felt the sharp pain in the back of your neck. That's when you knew you were being ridden by one of the passengers. The world has adjusted to their presence. No one knows who they are, where they came from, how many there are. But this is the new reality. They use your bodies as they wish. You go for a walk, clear your mind. You go to the library and you see a woman on the steps. She's got this look in her eye. She's just come out of it just like you. You're not supposed to have memory, though, of what they do to you when they are inside you. And yet you recognize the woman. It's the woman you've been with these past three days. You approach her. You don't tell her, though, why you recognized her. She doesn't know who you are. But she's got this look of terror in her eyes, of helplessness. The passengers. You find yourself in a small rural town. You see a little boy playing with a rat. And with his hands, but with his mind, he's manipulating it, making it do stupid things. When he grows bored with it, he makes the at rat begin to eat itself, starting with its tail. His blind aunt is on the porch. A man brings by the groceries, a smile on his face. Because you must be happy in this town. You must only have good thoughts. Because the little boy, whose name is Anthony, can read your mind, feel your emotions. You don't want to upset Anthony in any way whatsoever. And even when he does something good, let's say you feel mourning for someone who's died, be careful though, because his empathy could bring that person back from the grave. A small town's name is called Peaksville. And everyone is happy. It's a good life in Peaksville. Superpowers have created computers to help them fight their wars to end all wars. But what happens when one of those computers has consciousness and destroys the rival computers, leaving itself the only one left? And then in the process, kills all of humanity but five people. Four men, one woman. To play with, to experiment with, do unspeakable things to, and keep them alive on the verge of death for at least a hundred years. Suicide would be a way out. But it has an all-seeing eye. It starves them and feeds them rancid, the worst kinds of foods, if even that. And even at one point, what happens if you want to scream? But if you have no mouth, what good is it? Three stories. The Passengers by Robert Silverberg, Nebula Award winner for 1969 for Best Story. Same year as Hart and Ellison's A Boy and His Dog for Best Novella. And Ursula Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness for Best Novel. It's a Good Life. You know that story. It was the inspiration for the classic Twilight Zone episode. With Billy Mummy. It can be found in Mutants, edited by Robert Silverberg. 
same writer of The Passengers. But the author of It's a Good Life is Jerome Bixby. And we get to Harlan Ellison, who wrote the terrifying story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, published in 1967. Three stories.